Welcome to Bear and Balanced. I'm Jeff Burkus. I'm a writer over at Windy City Gridiron, and I'm joined by the boss, Lester A. Wiltfong Jr. Well, other than that, how was the play, Mrs. Lincoln? I think applies here. How are you doing tonight, Lester? Uh, I'm doing good. Much better than uh, Matt Nagy is uh, right now with the COVID test. Yeah, obviously that's unfortunate, and he's also. Uh, experiencing a, hum- a public humiliation at the hands of Bruce Arians and Tom Brady and Todd Bowles and everybody in between on that that Tampa Bay team, they got run out of town, thirty-eight to three. Uh, I don't even know if they got their parting shot of Captain Morgan on the way out or anything like that. Uh, rough, rough day. It was as bad as we were hope- uh, hoping, as bad as we feared um, mm-hmm. going into that week. And I mean, all the damage was done in the first half. I mean, that game was over somewhere in the first quarter and you were just kind of playing out the string and just never got anything going. So this is going to be a tough recap show. And I want to mention at the top that this is the recap show for the week because producer extraordinaire, Robert Schmitz is sick. He is battling something here. And so no bear with me this week. You'll have to deal with Lester and I trying to give, trying to give a balanced take on a 38 to three. I mean, we have been asked to do some things, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I've been doing, I've been writing for the site for seven years. You obviously much longer than that. We, we've had to handle some, some tough games over the years, but this one ranks up there. Yeah, there's been a lot of bad games, uh, unfortunately, since I've been, you know, doing this, you know, as much as I've been doing it. This is one of the worst. I mean, I, but the, the, the weird thing is, is, I mean, they were favored by, the, the Bucks were favored, favored by, I think, 12 or 13. So everyone expected a blowout. I just didn't think it would be this ugly. I mean, there was just no uh, redeeming qualities from this game. Like, like, like you, like you're talking about. We are the balanced show, you know, trying to. But it's it's rough. I and mean, this was a rough one. Uh, there was nothing really positive. I mean, there's there are a couple positives. I mean, we're, we'll talk about them, but not enough to make this truly balanced this week. No, it's going to be a pretty lopsided show, and at least it wasn't at the hands of Green Bay, which you know makes every loss is a little bit worse when you're dealing with Green Bay. But you know, this is bad. This is a former division opponent, uh, but this is not not currently in the division. But I wanted to kind of start off with something that we read today, which is that the ownership group is fed up and uh, cool. All right, I guess. But you know, I'm listening to the broadcast yesterday, and Romo and Nance are basically openly mocking the bears uh, for not being able to keep it close. I mean, you you can tell they're just like, why are we here? Mm -hmm. Why are we wasting? Why did CBS waste X millions of dollars for us to come and announce this game? Because it's, it's a blowout. Yeah. Tom. Great. Oh, the 600th touchdown football. Or what was that all about? Like, why is that worth so much money? I can understand. Okay. I'm going to, let's go on a little sidebar here. (laughs) 600th touchdown pass. Cool. Great. He's in his own stratosphere. Isn't that amazing? Love it. Tom Brady. Mike Evans hands the ball to a fan. Then someone's like, oh, no, we got to go get that ball back. And so there's like this negotiation. It's all over Twitter about what this guy got. And, oh, he got ripped off because this ball is worth at least a half a million dollars. And I'm thinking it didn't break the record. It's just this. It's He owns the record already. So every touchdown pass he throws is now another record. Why is this one? do you think has such a high value associated with it? I don't actually understand. I know that somebody from an auction house said it was worth half a million dollars, but what? Like, why? Yeah. Like, I don't get it. Like, what, what's, what's your take on <laughs> just, it, it's this, just a this weird, ridiculous situation? It's like they, they chose the the arbitrary 600. It's like a big deal. It's like, you know, well, that's right. that's a weird number. But like, like you said, he already has the record. So what is, is 601 worth more? Is 602 worth more? I mean, the fact that it was just a nice, even round number, I guess that that's a big deal. So. I don't know. Maybe his last one, you know, or the one the that breaks one the record. Worth a lot, yeah. Okay, but I can get those. Yeah. But like, this is just a round number. This doesn't make any sense to me. I think the guy did fine. But all right, back to back to the embarrassment that is um, the the Bears and McCaskies. Now they're fed up. That's 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 the the phrase. Yeah, we know you were that last year too, and you didn't make a change. So what is enough? Like what what is fed up enough? for George McCaskey and this ownership group to say, okay, like we tried to stick with this, but clearly this isn't working. You're not putting our players in a position to succeed. We're going to turn this over. Man, that's a great question. I wish someone knew the answer because like like I've been saying this whole year, I, I just see this team. I see him bringing a whole band back together. I mean, it took them, what, five, six, seven days last year to decide that they're going to bring back Pace and Nagy and, and keep things the same and, you know, this was after, yeah, they made the playoff, but come on, it's, 
you know, that, that team wasn't very good. That team kind of, you know, they, they, they got lucky. They got fortunate that the, you know, they, they, they snuck into playoffs and, you know, the offense was broken and, you know, everyone saw it and they decided to, to hem and haw for, for over a week and decided to bring him back. And so, so let's face it, if the bears are near 500 again this year and it's, you know, there's a good chance. I mean, they played the, the Niners this weekend. They're not very good. And then right. they played the Steelers who they're okay, but you know, that's a winnable game. Now all of a sudden the bears are five and four. It's, it's possible. And mm-hmm. then, and then what happens, you know, Oh, the, everyone's back on the, on the train. I mean, come on. I'm telling you, man, this this season's going to come down to Vikings Bears pointing at each other for the seventh spot. I'm, I'm I've been calling it all year. I'm going to stick with it until I'm proven wrong. But and the Vikings aren't teams, very good this year. The Vikings have had moments, no. but they're not. And it's like, come on, like, they're like the we're, we are stuck in football hell. Yeah, we're stuck in football hell as Bears fans because you know we need. I hate to say we need to see a, a collapse because I never will cheer for a collapse. Oh. Every game, I don't care what it is. I'm, I hope my team wins. I understand the ramifications that they lose is better for the grand scheme of things. But as a fan, I want to see wins. We're not going to see any changes unless there's a complete meltdown. And I don't, I can't see it happening. There's too much talent on this team and they will overcome the crappy coaching they get. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> boy. Yeah. That that's depressing. Well, let's let's go through our categories and let's see what we can unearth here. So uh, I believe it's my turn to start on the categories. So I will do mine first. And the first one is Trench Tribute, which was admittedly pretty tough this week because both sides of the ball did not look great. And I'm going a little tongue in cheek here. But my Trench Tribute is going to Alex Bars. There it is. Nice. Because... uh, Lachavius Simmons was not it. And so when Alex Bars came in, they at least, he at least settled things down a little bit. And and I, I kind of want to give a little credit to the guy who has swung around and played a lot of different positions and come in and been that sixth offensive lineman. I mean, that's not an easy spot to 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 nail down for any team. And he's done it fairly well. And so I, I'm 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 kind of it's a little bit tongue in cheek because I don't think you could have gotten worse than Lachavius Simmons. He got a zero passing grade from PFF. Or that's all over Twitter as well. Um, I will say that when we went to the Bears game and pulled up in front of the hotel, because um, I was going to, you know, big time it and valley my car. And of course they wouldn't because all the Bears players were. Lachavius Simmons was the one who pulled up behind me. And, and uh, you know, he's a big dude, uh, but uh, he, it, uh, no, nothing good came out of his his performance, and he got benched early. So, um, a little bit tongue in cheek, but I'm giving it to Alex Bars this week. That's a uh, probably the only way to go because that's exactly the way I went. I actually graded, <laughs> okay. you know, I actually graded the uh, the right tackle play because, oh, okay, like like you, I saw Simmons and it was just horrendous. And I had, I, I had a buddy of mine, you know, the, the aforementioned, you know, Papa Scarbs. You know, he's he's on the phone. He's a big big ND guy. He's like, oh, Alex Bars is doing pretty good. He's doing pretty good. You got to check him out. So I'm like, all right. When when I do my 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 weekly uh, rewatch, I'll make sure I check out Alex Bars, and he did okay. Um, I'll preface the grade by saying that at the point he came into the game, the game was pretty much over. Right. Um, the Bucks were no longer blitzing. They were no longer you know pulling any stunts. It was just pretty much straight straight up. You know, here's our front, block it. So he didn't have a lot of tricky stuff to do. But with that being said, he did pretty good. I, I had him down for a, a, a 42 snaps because the uh, NFL condensed game pass sucks and they cut out a lot. Uh, plus 37, minus five only, 88.1%. So pretty good. Again, like, like I say every week, some of those pluses are nothing special. The right. plays away, he just kind of gets in the way. You know, he didn't really do anything that made me say, wow, you know, he's, he's definitely a guy, but he's definitely better than Simmons. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing him start over Elijah Wilkinson because I was not overly impressed with Wilkinson. But at this point, if you're the Bears and you have problems with right tackle, you could do worse, and, and we've seen worse. So maybe let Alex Bars uh, keep it going and, until you get some uh, Jermaine Effetti back. Again, Effetti, though, man, the right offensive line sucks right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, Wilkinson's not doing himself any favors by having two COVID cycles for himself and, and, and this whole thing. It's just he'll probably miss one more game because uh, you know I don't know for a fact, but I know that he had some some pretty strong takes on the vaccine before, so I'm guessing he's not 
vaccinated, right. which I believe is a minimum 10 day quarantine. I believe right. I'm not sure that the, the rules are really tricky, but I think it's 10 day minimum um, unless he, he clears it. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing one more game. So we should see the Alex Barr show again next week. Yeah. Yeah. There might be some other stuff with COVID that we have to watch because obviously, like you said, at the top of the show, you got Matt Nagy, uh, offensive line coach Juan Castillo was watching film with Wilkinson, right? I mean, it wasn't yeah. that, that like right. the morning of. And so, uh, you know, there, there may be more of this, you know, these breakthrough cases or, or guys that are getting it that are not vaccinated. So something to watch for coming into this week, which, which is important because like you said, again, this is a winnable game coming up, but well, let's move on to the uh, sweet tweets, tweet of the week. Um, I am highlighting uh, a Windy City Gridiron veteran. Uh, I, I think I would assume his name is Tyler. It's at not underscore not Tyler. Um, so he's not not Tyler. And his his name uh, is Bears Beats Battlestar Galactica, which is a great uh, little office uh, reference there. But anyway, he says... 49ers and Steelers both ungood. Bears are bad, but have a shot in both of those games. So I just wanted to highlight that and say, again, we've already kind of talked about this, but yeah, the, the Bears are not going to beat good teams this year. We, we, we've we said that all year. We said that in the preseason. None of this is surprising to us. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm not really that thrilled with the blowouts, but the result is not surprising. But they can beat bad teams and they can win coin flips. Um, you know, they can flip coins with those teams in the middle. And right now the Niners look like a bad team, which is kind of surprising because I thought that they were going to be pretty good. They're injured, but they're always it's the injured. great Kyle Shanahan at the coach. You know, I know. I, I like, I mean, yeah, I, I like Kyle like Shanahan I'm as a play fan, caller. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm but but in, in as an offensive, like system designer, I, I think his offense is, you know, very efficient, but uh, you know, they, you know, Kittle definitely changes what they are. They can't figure out a second receiver, but, and then the Steelers, I mean, with, with Ben Roethlisberger as, you know, the zombified form of Ben Roethlisberger, I mean, you know, they're, they're beatable as well. They've got a really good defense, but, or at least coming in, they look like they might be, but both of those teams are beatable. And so mm -hmm. you could look at a bears team that's five and four going into the bye week that would still have two games against Minnesota, a game against the lions, all of a sudden, you're you're talking yourself into and uh, Giants are on the schedule still. Seahawks, who knows where they're going to be at by the time the Bears play them. So you're talking about, you know, oh, is this team going to win eight games? Are they going to play Minnesota in the last week for win number nine in a playoff spot? Like, I mean, this is it is possible that this team could do the exact same thing that they've been doing the last couple of years. That's the way I see it going. Like I said, it's uh, it's rough, but you know that kind of leads me into my tweet. And like after the game, I like to kind of go through the numbers and I kind of uh, send some tweets out just to the pure stats, just to kind of the stuff that intrigues me. And someone tweeted back at me. He, he said, uh, this is bear fan 34 at that CH 34. He tweeted back at me. Think about this for interesting stats. Two of the bears wins are versus five and two teams. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> Those two teams are the two top two seeds in the AFC right now. The Raiders, the Bengals. Um, yeah, maybe they were in a different place when the Bears played them, but still, you know, the Bears uh, beat both those teams. And it's weird because, you know, from week to week, you know, our emotions are, are toyed with with this with this franchise. And here we are, like, like we we're just talking about if they're five and four, you look back at their schedule and, you know, there's going to be some pretty decent wins on there. Yeah, there's some really bad losses, but, you know, again, going to be hovering around 500 fighting for that playoff spot and if they uh if they make it do you fire naggy and pace <laughs> Man, well, this is, uh, you know, what what fired him last year but yes yeah the you know those are interesting teams though and i will say that my opinion is that both the raiders and the 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 Bengals are those teams in the middle right they're, they're the, the teams that are coin flip yeah. teams but they they have really good records and so yeah it does look really good and and that you know somebody else had kind of came at me and said well they can only beat bad teams and i was like you know hey pump the brakes man like you can't take yeah. w's off the board they do have two wins against teams that have winning records and for whatever that's worth those wins happen and they were convincing wins at the time too so they weren't lucky you know they they were they were solid wins they had good plans so uh, like you say this team is confounding in a lot of ways but yes Let's move up to caught in the numbers game stat of the week. So my stat of the week is the number 99. 
I'm looking at Lester's face to see if he had the same or like he had 100. I don't or something. this just, week. No, okay. not this week. Okay. All right. So uh, 99 is Justin Fields' passer rating on play action passes. He's oh, 21 nice. of 32 for 244 yards and a touchdown. Uh, that's a pass rating of 99. And why I bring that up is that the Bears only run play action on about 25% of their snaps. Depending on how you count it, there's different interpretations. Sometimes it's a, an actual play action pass might be an RPO uh, where you have the option to run, which isn't technically maybe play action as much. But anyway, um, there's there's different ways to count it. The stat that I'm pulling is 25%. Probably time to start thinking about <laughs> moving up that split it's something that i've been talking about for you know four years uh but maybe it's time uh matt nagy and company to realize what your young quarterback can do well and put him in a position to succeed that is a stark split play action versus straight drop back you know play action passes the uh you know the, the bears like we've talked about before i know it's something that, that you've mentioned a lot on your other show the the run game has to marry the the pass game better than it has and and we just don't see a lot of that happening like i, I know uh, brian baldinger broke down the second play of the bears game earlier today on twitter and it just it was a play action pass and of course there was a late blitz that came and the bears didn't pick it up but it just the, the as as the as an offense they didn't sell it very good the fake wasn't the best the o line you know they basically popped right up so the linebackers didn't care you know the play action pass has to be deception and if they're not, if there's not a deception in it, it's not as quite as effective. As a whole, this offense, they just can't do it. I mean, another this is another reason why I'm I've been you know pointing to the whole Matt Nagy scheme thing, and you know I just want to see someone here that knows how to run a play action game, you know how to run a mm -hmm. scheme properly. It just we haven't seen it. No, no, we haven't. It's not his game, and so maybe I need to just shut up because I and that's what I did on Bears <laughs> over beers because. I, I said, like, all right, guys, I've said this too much. You, you, you guys are probably sick of me talking about play action. Clearly, Matt Nagy doesn't care about play action, and that's just not the kind of coach he is. And But I keep wanting Nagy to evolve and to understand, you know, hey, now I'm focusing on game management, so, hey, maybe I do need to, like, be more aggressive and go for it on fourth down. And maybe I do need to understand that I'm the underdog here, and so I need to be throwing everything out here and taking chances. He wasn't he, none of that. Like he has no self reflection of what the, his team is, and he he's he's just not very good at a lot of those other things. But he's definitely not good at taking a look at the trends around the league and trying to incorporate that incorporate that into his game plans. And you know, again, he's responsible for everything, right? He's responsible for the offensive game plans of, uh, eventually. So I'm not going to put this on just Bill Lazor at this point, but Bill Lazor can call more play action as well. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 probably a, a it's a point that'll continue to just go into the, the the void and never get heard. But this is the way forward, right? If if the Bears do move on from Nat Nagy, I hope that they're looking at hey, who's got a good play action system? Who understands the interrelationship between running game and passing game? And because that's that's what we think Justin Fields will be successful at. Now, are they smart enough to understand what they have? <laughs> Who knows. We'll I mean, it's, it's a passing league, you know, it's a passing league, but the run game is so important. So if you, if you look at, you know, right between the cracks there, that's the play action game. And you have to have a quality play action pass, uh, a quality play action scheme to have success in today's NFL. That's just, these are just the facts. So right. I don't know. What about you? So, so for me, my, my number is uh, this week is 602. Uh, we kind of alluded to it earlier. And that's the Tom Brady's touchdown passes. That was in just this last game, or is that over? That, that was that was his career. Okay, uh, felt like felt like six hundred two. Yeah, that like game. That. yeah. So, but for, but for me, what what it really intrigued me is is our guy Jack Silverstein tweeted out at Rejack. You know, he, he counted up the Bears touchdown passes for oh, six hundred two, and it Tom Brady got his number between two thousand one and two thousand twenty one, so twenty years. Yeah, the Chicago Bears have thrown six hundred two touchdown passes. Going all the way back to 1989, so it took them from 89 to 2021 to match Tom Brady's 602, which just you know just points to the quarterback play in the, in Chicago. 89 was probably uh, Harbaugh, I think, at that time. So going all the way back to Harbaugh to now is when they had their 602. 
Honestly, I thought you're gonna go back. <laughs> we're gonna have to go back further. That's how. Yeah. <laughs> if you would have made me guess, <laughs> I enough, probably yeah. would have. I probably would have said, you know, oh, it goes all the way back to '85 or something like that. Yeah. But, Vince Evans, maybe. Mm, Jeez. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's horrible. That's depressing, and just not what this franchise does well. Yeah. I don't have anything to add to that. That's a that's a good one to depress us going into the break. So we'll we'll pause here. We'll come right back for everybody's favorite segment, the three bears. All right, let's back. So the three bears. We're going to start off with the positive. I don't think that there is another way to go here. I think there's only one positive. To I, I have two. I have two because I was okay, going to go good. first. So go ahead good. and do your guy. So uh, Khalil Herbert, there it is, who's there just, it is, yeah. just sitting in this spot for me right now. Uh, but 18 carries, 100 yards rushing. He did get the 100-yard game, which like, great. I love 100-yard rushing games. One of my favorite things to track. He had added five catches for 33 yards. Uh, I do think this int- sets up an interesting conversation when, when Montgomery gets back. Montgomery is going to be the starter and when healthy, he's he's too good to not be. But this really does set up a legitimate one-two punch. And Herbert's going to continue to get carries in this offense. He's too good not to. And so that's really exciting. I think I'm confident in saying that this is the worst Bears franchise loss in a game where they had a 100-yard rusher. I, I I did go through and I, I tried to look at all these, the top backs in their 100-yard games like Peyton and Neil Anderson and Gail Sayers and guys like that. And I got down about, you know, the top 10 guys and I couldn't find a more, a, a bigger blowout. Now, maybe there's a game with a guy that I'm, you know, maybe had a, just a couple 100-yard games and I, it just flew below my radar and they lost by worse. But generally, you don't get 100-yard rushers in in losses because, you know, you're, you're starting to pass. Um, you generally don't get 100 yard rushers and blowout losses because that's that's just not a thing. So this was I just started thinking like, it, how, is this a crazy anomaly or what? And I went back. I couldn't find a worse defeat. There are some bad defeats, but not worse than 35 <laughs> points. So um, crazy for Khalil Herbert to get his first 100 yard game in a 35 point loss. But he's my hot bowl of porridge bear. What about you? Who's your other one? You know, real quick with Herbert, he was close to that 100-yard mark in the first half. I mean, that just shows oh, yeah. you how, how good the Bears were running the ball. But, you know, they could just – nothing else on offense is working. It's like, again, it points back to to marrying what you want to do with the pass to what you're doing against the run. When the run is that effective, you would think as an offense you would be able to move the ball, and it just wasn't happening here. So, so, so for me, I, I wanted to mention this guy because I thought he had a pretty good game, and that's DeAndre Houston Carson. Oh, okay. You know, he had 11 tackles, one pass defense, uh, a fumble recovery. It was his first ever career start. He's he's 29 years old. He's been on the Bears for I think this might be his fifth or sixth year. Uh, one of Ryan Pace's early draft picks, and, and he's been known as a special teams guy. But you know, getting his first start with with Tayshawn Gibson, uh, senior injured, Deion Bush on IR. Um, I thought Houston Carson had a pretty decent game, and you know he's not the safety of the future here. But I see no reason why he couldn't be, at least be the safety of the present because. Tayshawn Gibson hasn't really done enough to, to really stand out. So why not let a guy like Houston Carson get a shot next to Eddie Jackson? Actually, speaking to Eddie Jackson, he also had 11 tackles. So your safeties had 22 tackles, which is not a good stat. That tells you the front seven was getting no, gassed. Really and, you know, so so 22 tackles out of the uh, the safeties. But for me, my hot guy this week is, is Houston Carson. I, just, guy, I, huh? I, I, I had to mention him. Yeah, the hot guy. There. Yeah, the hot bear. <laughs> I don't know if that's better. Um, yeah. All right. Cold bowl, bowl of porridge for me. I mean, you know, close your eyes and point, yeah. right? <laughs> but, uh, I, 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 th- I, I, offensive game plan. Like, I, I know yeah. that that's not a person, but the offensive game plan, like what happened? Like you had some stuff figured out where things were working against Green Bay. You you were protecting Justin Fields at least a little better here. We started to see growth. And then you just went five wide and thought that everything would be okay. And just like it just where did why? Why did this regression come like this? And it just it really frustrated me. Three points. Like I, I feel like that Bob Euchre quote from in, in Major League, like one hit, one goddamn yeah. hit, like <laughs> three points in a in a game in 2021 against a, a secondary that is not good. Like they're they're banged up. They, they they will be good, but they have what one legitimate player playing, and everybody else they're missing. Their, they were missing their top two corners. They're both on IR. 
They're missing their next up corner, which Richard Sherman is also injured. So they were on to their fourth and fifth cornerbacks. The Bears couldn't the do second, anything. The second week in a row, the Bears could not scheme anything up to, to take advantage of a depleted secondary. And again, that points, like you said, to the game plan. Yeah, it's disgusting. So that's my that's my cold this week. What about you? Uh, we talked about it earlier. Lashavius, Pig, Simmons. God. Uh, 21 snaps. <sighs> you know, um, I had him down for, for a plus 12, which is a minus 9. Oh, no. 57.1%. You know, we talked about a little bit uh, pre-show that the, the pro football focus, they always grade on style points, you know, where it's 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 a negative negative two up through a positive two. So there were some pass plays where he actually did his job. It, it wasn't like he did nothing, but but it wasn't clearly enough. I mean, he was clearly overmatched. The fact that the Bears understood going in, even if they had Elijah Wilkinson at right tackle, he can't handle Jason Pierre Paul and, and, and Shaq Barrett one on one. No. The fact that the, that the game plan was, hey, we'll leave our right tackle on an island, that's piss poor game planning again. Right. I just don't understand it. You know, it's 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 malpractice. It's malpractice. Nagy used to do those things where he, you know, it, it felt very much like a like a middle school team where it's like, well, if you're on the roster, you're gonna get the play, right? And you're, you know, he'd bring everybody in and Ryan Nall would get like four touches and you're like i mean i you know i'm from morgan state i'm not gonna you know i went to morgan state i'm not gonna say anything bad about uh, a fellow alum but i mean do you really want ryan mall no touching the ball in an important situation no that's the kind of guy that's there for special teams and he comes in if you're winning the game by three scores late right like there's no point in bringing him in but he had this mentality like hey all of our players are going to play they're going to be ready they're going to contribute and like that's going to help like build this like camaraderie and stuff and it's like that's not how you do this there's a reason why these guys at the top get all of these touches right like there's a reason why Allen robinson you know in the past anyway could could handle 150 targets right because he's that good of a player and you want that you want to give volume towards those players and and so if you think well you know we're gonna trust our guy we're gonna trust our sixth seventh round pick whatever he was and and he's you know offensive tackle six what college did he play for i can't even remember middle tennessee state maybe yeah, or something like yeah, that yeah. i don't know so i mean what are we doing right like do you just have no idea how to scheme for the the talent that you have out there or are you just so blindly naive that you're just gonna hey he's in there we're gonna we're gonna expect the level of play that we expect out of every other player that we would put in that position. Like what? Why? Like, or, I mean, that's dumb. Like you say, that's malpractice. You know, like I said, Alex Bars didn't have an outstanding game by any means. Like I said, the, the, the blitzes were off. The dogs were called off at his point, but how do you go through practice for the last couple of years and really come in a way thinking, yeah, Simmons is much better than Alex right. Bars. And like right. what? <laughs> like this yeah. is, I mean, he, he, Simmons looked lost on so many reps in this game. You know, whether it was uh, the, the outside rush, the inside move, he was getting beat by spin moves. He was getting bold back. I mean, then on the, some of the run plays, it just seemed like he was just, just going through the motion to see what he just, he played like he didn't know what he was doing. Right. And it's, you know, part of it is physical, but part of it is mental. This is the second year, his first start ever. And again, going back to, you don't give him any help on those pass plays against two of the better pass rushers in the NFL. Yeah. Guys that know all the tricks. Yeah, right. It's not like a young guy still learning or something. No, no, no. These guys are like savvy vets, and they were licking yeah. their chops. Huh. Yeah. Oh, Pig Simmons, let's go. Right. <laughs> All right. The just right. I had trouble with this, but same. I, I, I you actually kind of mentioned it, and I. So my answer is Eddie Jackson. Oh man. <laughs> and, and so he was around the football. He recorded a lot of tackles, which has been the big bugaboo with him. And he had a chance at a big play. It would have been great if he would have held on to it because I think he could have scored there. Uh, Brady sort of had a miscommunication, tried to uh, slam it in quick. I think the Evans and Evans just wasn't ready for it. And Eddie was just going to wrap up. Like, I think he's like, he's in his own head about making sure he tackles and it just, it just hit off of him. Um, but I, but I, you know what? He's around the ball. He's, you know, he's doing things um, I, to me. Like, it's like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to at least say that Eddie at least did what I thought he could do. 
<laughs> it was okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was like for me, like like I always go through my notes and I like I try and get all my stuff. And this is the category I'm like, I don't know what the hell to do on this one. I had no idea. So, you know, I'm gonna take a page out of your book and I'm gonna go with uh, the special teams. I'm gonna go Cairo Santos. Yeah, one for one, 28 yard field goal. One right? for one, a 28 <laughs> yarder. It was it was a chip shot, but it was a 35th consecutive field goal, which is extending his Bears record. It's also still the longest uh, current streak in the NFL. So, so just right, Cairo Santos. Yeah, those three points, man. Without him, <laughs> it would have been would have been a zero. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I don't want to belabor this game because why? Uh, so, yeah. if you want to get out of here, no uh, Fields report today. Oh man, you're right. Yeah, I know. We got to touch right. on Justin All right. Fields. Sorry, I uh, I forgot to pad that in my notes. Uh, I I pulled up an old uh agenda yeah. where before i put that in there so you were correct so the fields report i do not have anything prepped so you start and then i'll i'll think of something uh, he did not he didn't have a very good game you know right. he missed high on a few throws you know again his decision making is slow in some cases you know but the protection is not there right and i know what what a lot of analysts who are really pro sitting your rookie the reason they're all forward is because they're afraid he'll be the next David Carr. And for every David Carr who played early and sucked, there's a Peyton Manning who played early and sucked and thrived, you know? So right. it's not, you know, you don't know who this guy is. You know, this comes down to his mental makeup. I think from, you know, just again, I don't know the guy, you know, I just know by what I see, what I've watched, what I, what I see on, on, on the press conferences. He seems like he has the confidence and the swag to, to just, learn from his mistakes so i'm okay with him playing early my only concern is that i don't want him getting hurt because the pass pro is still not there right and does he understand the pass pro completely i'm still not sure he does because there was some blitzes and 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 you know todd bowles is a good defensive coordinator he yeah. seemed like he was he was blitzing early away from khalil herbert knowing that herbert's a rookie fields is a rookie so he would blitz on the opposite side of Khalil Herbert. That's what happened on the second play of the game. They blitzed the opposite side of Herbert, so it was a tough block. If that was the scheme where they expected Herbert to take the fake to his right and come back to his left to make that block, that's a tough block to ask. So I'm just concerned with Justin Fields. I'm not concerned with him not being able to thrive at some point in his career. I think he's got that mental makeup to do that. But the pass pro is just not there for him, and then the sacks he's taken, they're not all on. They're not all on him. I know I get some. I got some crit criticism last week in sack watch because I, I pinned a few of those sacks on him because you know I got a call like I see it. Yeah. But you know this week I haven't looked tape completely yet, but I think most of those sacks are going to be on the uh, on the O line or, or the backs. I think my takeaway was, you know, it started bad early, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, and and when he had that early pass to uh commit cole commit third and eight, first down oh. look right on the money and commit dropped it and, and and it just felt like you gotta pick him up man you like you you can't do that to him because these you know there was uh someone was saying like when you when you gra grip a football too hard you can't really throw the spiral Right. Like you, if you, you have to kind of have a natural feel to it and just like use that as a metaphor. Like if you're trying too hard, if you're trying to make every play, then, you know, you're it's really like you gripping that football and you really can't get a good spiral on it. Right. So if he's trying to make every play and he's, you know, uh, and he's trying to fit every pass in perfect and he's trying to do other stuff and he's just waiting that extra second for it. You know, he's not really in the flow. He's not feeling it. And I'm not putting I'm not saying. The reason why Justin Fields wasn't very good was because of Cole Komet. Like, no, nah, no, nah, nah, don't do that to me. Like, what I'm what I'm saying is all of those guys got to pick them up because Mooney's had drops, Robinson's had drops, Komet's had his his share, right? Like everybody's had drops, and it's like, yeah, those happen, but he was a young quarterback. He's trying to get into rhythm, and you see it when he does start to go, when he starts to flow. He's he, it's beautiful. Like he can do it. But things went wrong early with the pass pro. Things went wrong early with drop passes. At that point, he was done. Like, yeah. it just it wasn't going to happen for him. And so I was hopeful to see something in the second half. I, you, people, you know, the, the guys in the studio were saying, ah, mercy benching, don't, don't expose him to a second half here. And, and I thought, I kind of see that. And I kind of think 
let's see what he can do. Yeah. Let's see if he can kind of get something going. Maybe the Bucks will kind of back off a little bit and, you know, he can get into a rhythm. He just really didn't. It just never really happened for him. And so, um, you know, hopefully he resets. Like you say, he's great. He's great in front of, he's very honest and, and he's great yeah. in front of, in front of the media. I think that's part of why people are going to love this guy, but let's see what happens against the Niners. Niners have a good pass rush. Niners have Nick Bosa, right? Nick Bosa, probably could have been the Super Bowl MVP, right? I mean, he yeah. Nick is really good at football. And so they're going to have to have a plan for him. They haven't shown that they've had a plan for good pass rushers yet. So this could be another another challenge for Justin Fields coming up. But I I, I think that this guy, it's important for him early to, to just get into a rhythm, get into a flow, and maybe we can see um, some of those gains happen. So I don't know. I, it's tough to find silver lining on a thirty-eight to three loss. Um, well, like you were saying, it's, it's just it's such a it was a weird second half because the Bucks did call the dogs off. They stopped right. blitzing. I mean, they just kind of sat back and did their thing, and you know they weren't in full-on prevent mode, but they weren't pressing as much as they were, and and and, and we still couldn't see this offensive game plan scheme up some nice easy throws for fields which is like what are we what what are they doing here like right. like like how could they not find some nice rub routes to get them some some slants over the middle some crossing routes you know yeah the protection wasn't always there but you know you got to go more max protect you got to protect them with the play action you know there are things you can do as an offense to help your rookie quarterback out and they didn't do it. So as far as benching him, I don't think you bench him in that situation. I mean, there's really nothing at that point. You know, you don't want him going off after, you know, he had, what, three picks, two fumbles. You know, I think it all, all was in the first half. So you don't want him being benched because of that because that's going to be in the back of his mind. So let him play it out. But but where was the help from the offense? Did you hear I, – I don't know how true this is, but I saw this on Twitter that apparently – either the first pick or one of the first uh, one of the one of the interceptions was because yeah whoever is in his helmet which i assume is laser said hey they've got 12 guys on the field and so he thought he had a free play yep and he, that's why he threw it up and that was the second straight week that that's happened like wait 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 hold on let's back this up who is telling you that you have 12 guys on the field and why? And then why is that guy wrong? So does Bill Lazor not know how to count to 11? Well, I think there was a 12th at some point, and he was hustling off. So I'm not sure. The, okay. The Bears, the, Bears, right. the, the Bears didn't say who who it was, whether it was Nagy or Lazor, you know, but they both have the headset. Could be either one of them. You know, and and I actually, when I saw that, I actually put that on the site last night. So I actually have Justin Fields press conference on the site. I actually shared his quote on the site. So if you guys have missed that, you know, go to WinnieCityGridiron.com. You can kind of see that. It was last night's uh, article that popped up there. But yeah, Fields went into detail explaining what happened. And then Nagy, of course, in today's press, press conference on, on Monday, he talked about how, you know, yes, that's something that they did. They did see that, you know, and but at that point, once the play is snapped, now Justin Fields has to understand that he just can't, you know, chuck it down there and, and hope something happens because, the, again, the flag wasn't thrown. And as the quarterback, ultimately it's his responsibility to see that. But like you said, get out of the kid's head. He's a rookie. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing exactly? <laughs> like, what is this? I, I That sounded just crazy to me. I, I, I don't know. I get it. Like, hey, there's a 12th guy and, like, does he see it? Does he know like what he's looking for? And like, go watch, go watch Justin Fields' press conference. It's only like five, six minutes. It's a yeah. really quick press conference. If he explains it, and you know, you can see, you can feel his intensity when he's explaining it because he thought something was there. He talks about how you know the, the ball snapped quick, and then he seemed like he may have caught his offense off guard, so everything wasn't there. But then even on that play, um, I think it was Lashavia Simmons totally whiffed the block, and there was pressure on Fields so fast it was like. You know, he, like the player was doomed from the start because Simmons can't block. So basically, it's like it's four old four stuff, right? Like that's like upper level, you know, graduate level work stuff. And this is a rookie. Like let's yeah. let's not let's not worry about that stuff yet, right? I Aaron, I don't know. I I thought it was a great. I didn't. I haven't watched the press conference. I'll admit. Um, I I I I just saw the quote and I was like. What are we doing? Yeah. Okay. That's that's the fields that's report wrap. digression. That's so 
let's uh, <laughs> let's get out of here. Make sure you're checking everything out. I do think that this next game is more winnable. We will preview that on on Bears over Beers at the end of the week uh, with EJ Snyder. And you know, check this out on YouTube. Give us a subscribe. All that stuff. Please do that. That is great for us. And uh, Lester, anything else that you would like to plug? Uh, sack watch should be fun this week because it's going to be a uh, another uh, another another four, which is the Bears lead the league in sacks. They lead the league in in sack percentage. So I might get started on that tonight because you know it takes a while. Too, yeah, it takes a while. Yep, I got my stats article coming out tomorrow, and then I'm doing ten thoughts on Wednesday because nice. I'm flipping them because I dove into stats over the weekend and it was ready. So uh, that that's what you get. I'm flipping them. So, um, all right, well, we will get out of here and until next week, thanks for listening and bear down.